addressing several questions on inflation concerns. Minister of State for Trade and Industry Lo Yan Ling says Singapore does not expect persistent accelerating inflation ahead and cost pressures are expected to ease in the second half of the year. Ms Lo also says that the small and open nature of Singapore's economy limits how much the government can shield Singaporeans from inflationary pressures, but it's sparing no effort to lessen the impact. First, the government is striving hard to keep Singapore economy competitive so that we can keep creating good jobs for Singaporeans and to bring sustainable wage growth for Singaporeans. Second, given the imported and domestic cost pressures, MES tightened the monetary policy in October last year by shifting the trade-weighted Singapore dollar towards an appreciating path. Since then, Singapore dollar has strengthened, which helped reduce the Singapore dollar cost of imports and shield Singaporeans from some of the external cost pressures. Third, the government carefully manages domestic supply-side constraints, such as the supply of industrial and commercial space, to help rein in business rental costs that may translate to higher consumer prices. Fourth, the government has been diversifying our food import sources and today, our food supplies come from more than 170 countries and regions from the world. This helps to ensure that the prices of our food supplies remain competitive and reduce our vulnerability to larger price fluctuations globally. Fifth, the government works closely with industry partners, including major retailers, to ensure that the prices of daily necessities and food items are competitive and affordable. Last but not least, our sixth strategy. The government provides targeted assistance to lower-income Singaporeans who need support for their basic living expenses through schemes such as the Permanent GST Voucher Scheme, Service and Conservancy Charges, SNCC rebates and the public transport voucher. Global inflationary pressures are leading to higher prices for utilities and groceries for you and me. And so Second Minister for Finance Indrani Raja says that in the upcoming budget, priority will be given to help Singaporeans with the cost of living. And replying to a supplementary question from MP Liang Enghua on if the expected GST hike can be delayed in light of inflation, Ms Indrani says that cannot be put off forever. However, the government will delay the impact of the hike on households. There are actually two distinct aspects of that question. One is, can we delay the date that GST takes effect? But the second and the much more important question is, can we delay the impact of that increase on Singaporeans? We said the exact timing would depend on the state of the economy and how much our expenditures grow and how buoyant our existing taxes are. And we said all that before COVID-19. Then the pandemic came along. So it's not something we can put off forever, but the exact timing is something that we have to think about. In deciding the timing for the GST hike, we are carefully considering all the overall economic conditions the economy is recovering steadily and barring fresh disruptions, it should grow in step with global economic recovery. And we expect GDP to grow by 3 to 5 percent in 2022. But this brings me to the second question, which is the more important one, which is irrespective of whatever date we may say that GSD takes effect, can we delay the impact on Singaporeans? And the answer is that we have designed it such that yes, we can delay the impact on Singaporeans. Through the assurance package for the majority of Singaporeans, we will delay the impact for them effectively by five years. And for the lower income, the impact on them will be delayed effectively for 10 years. So essentially, whatever the increase to their expenditure as a result of GST, the assurance package is designed to buffer them for that increase. So the government is directly supplementing them so that they won't feel the impact. 